So guys, I want to thank. I want to uh, thank you for your participation, but we are not uh, done yet. We have one more presentation to go. So uh, last but definitely not least, I want to introduce uh, Volodymyr Pisaruk. Uh, Volodymyr started his career in aviation in 2012 as a turnaround coordinator and load controller at Ukraine International Airlines. Uh, after working in the airline for nearly eight years, Volodymyr took up the position of product owner for Smart Load in Smart for Aviation in 2020, and he is looking to contribute to the success of the product for years uh, to come. And uh, today he will tell us about a contribution of modern weight and balance solutions to the airline's cost efficiency. Um, we have a little change for today. Uh, Volodymyr prepared the recording with his uh, presentation. Uh, unfortunately, he had some difficulties, so we hope um, you, you will understand the situation. Uh, we are all working from homes right now, and, uh, and there's, a, of course, a need to be a little bit more uh, flexible. Uh, but don't worry, Volodymyr. Uh, let me see. Uh, Volodymyr, are you actually with us? Would you like to say a few words at the beginning, or should we start with the with the video? Uh, hello, guys. Can can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can, Paulina, can you please launch the video? The problem is that I just have a small kid at home, and uh, my daughter can <laughs> break in my room at any time, and she can cry. So sure. sorry, I can be disrupted. Totally so sorry for that. But I will be here for the Q&A. Totally do understand. So, uh, Nadine, if I can uh, ask you to please share the, the video and uh, yeah, I guess uh, we can start and Volodymyr, I will let you know once we will be heading to an end uh, so you can join us for the Q&A session and you guys can ask questions uh, anytime. Thank you. Booked uh, data, checked data, all the actual data. And of course, the closer uh, the closer it is, to, the closer the time is to departure, uh, the more accurate the forecasted zero fuel weight is. And systems, weight and balance systems, are capable of automatic resending of the estimated zero fuel weight to the flight planning system. And again, historical data are stored and applied. Um, and all statistical data are, in the end, sent to the airline so, so that the airline could use those data for business intelligence. And probably one of the, one of the most prominent examples of the statistical data that are used um, from the weight and balance perspective is the uh, weight, baggage weight per passenger or, for example, the average passenger weight. So there are, of course, many, many other uh, parameters that are valuable for airlines. So that's just a couple of examples. So basically, I think that I managed to, uh, to describe the most prominent advanced features of modern weight and balance systems. And now let's talk about how modern weight and balance systems can impact the airline's cost efficiency. Everyone who works in the aviation industry knows that safety always comes first. Accidents and incidents are the highest costs that an airline can pay, and the weight and balance is not an exception here. There can be different errors and adverse consequences with regard to the weight and balance. The most common errors are issuance of an incorrect load sheet, using a wrong load sheet, using incorrect weights and calculations, overweight and out of trim takeoffs and landings, incorrect distribution of passengers and cargo, using securing of cargo loads. The most common consequences of those errors are rejected takeoffs, takeoff overruns, tail strikes, tail tipping, in flight load shifts and loss of controllability. Modern weight and balance systems help airlines improve their safety record by providing a higher level of weight and balance calculations, automatic flight processing, 
waiting balance checks and validations, digital load confirmation, efficient and reliable alerting and communication, and minimum human involvement overall, which is important considering that humans are the most common source of errors in aviation. Another major benefit that modern weight and balance solutions can bring is the minimization or complete avoidance of flight delays caused by weight and balance and load control issues. In the old world, we are printing of load sheets at boarding gates or at load control offices, and their subsequent delivery to aircraft were standard things, reissues of load sheets created a high risk of a flight delay. Usually, load sheets had to be reissued every time a last-minute change threshold defined by an airline was exceeded, and it usually happened just several minutes before departure, at the end of the loading or boating processes. Even when last-minute changes did not exceed acceptable thresholds, they often caused delays because those changes had to be manually filled and signed in paper load sheets. Most importantly, personnel authorized to perform last-minute changes had to make sure that all weight and balance parameters remain within the limits and that the CG change is not very significant and does not require the tail horizontal stabilizer position to be changed, which often took some precious time before departure. These days, this job is done automatically by modern weight and balance systems. Also, flight crew members spend two to three minutes on average to perform pre-flight performance calculations, and to do this, they require the most accurate weight and CG data. Nowadays, with modern weight and balance systems, pilots can receive this information as soon as it's available via an EFB interface, without having to call a load planning agent or to ask a ramp agent to get this information or to wait for a final load sheet until it's late before departure. Another frequent type of flight delays was, and still is, the last-minute refueling due to significant zero-fuel weight changes, when the actual weight exceeds the allowed upper value according to the flight plan. Modern weight and balance solutions resend the zero-fuel weight information immediately after the threshold exceeding is detected. And the last but not least, flight delays were, and still are, often caused by last-minute loading and offloading of payload, which we will talk about in more details later in this presentation. One of the most basic things that all airlines struggle to achieve is to increase the accuracy of the payload weight calculation. It is particularly important because it directly impacts the calculation of the required fuel that must be loaded on the aircraft before departure. In general, it's always better to use actual weights wherever possible instead of standard weights. Modern weight and balance systems can support airlines in this as they are capable of applying actual weights for all parts of the aircraft weight. However, it is an airline's task to define, select or provide the most relevant data that should be used by a weight balance systems, and airlines take different approaches to calculation of the weight of pantry, potable water, passengers, baggage and even UD air weights. For example, in the modern world, the weight of pantry and potable water usually depends on the booked number of passengers, so it is not the best approach to use standard weights calculated based on the maximum passenger capacity. With regard to the passenger weights, uh, it is nearly impossible for airlines to use actual passenger weights, but it is possible to collect statistical data that would allow an airline to use its own defined passenger weights that are more accurate than the standard ones approved by civil aviation authorities. Using actual check baggage weights is a very common practice in the industry. On the other hand, bags that are taken from passengers at the gate, which are usually referred to as gate bags, still cause issues for airlines as their weight is simply added to the payload weight several minutes before departure. However, modern weight and balance systems can compensate for this last-minute acceptance of gate bags by adjusting the passenger weight accordingly. And with regard to tear weights of containers and pallets, 
it's always better to use actual tear weights of individual ULDs, or at least airlines' average tear weights per ULD type, rather than use industry standard tear weights. Airlines can optimize the uplift of extra fuel in two different ways. The first and most common one is to minimize or completely avoid the loading of extra fuel to reduce the fuel usage during the flight. However, there is a second approach which is still widely used by airlines, and it's exactly the opposite to the first one, as it's about loading as much fuel as possible, or as much fuel as required to operate not only the given flight, but also the next flight after that, without refueling at the destination airport. The second approach makes an economic sense for airlines when the fuel price is so much higher at the destination airport that the fuel price difference for the tank of fuel is higher than the cost of fuel required to carry that tank of fuel. Of course, many airlines either do not use the practice of carrying tank of fuel at all or use it only in exceptional cases because of their environmental responsibility. However, in any case, it's solely the choice of an airline, and modern weight and balance systems can support both practices. The most important factor here is to plan the process of fuel loading in several steps and to estimate the amount of fuel that needs to be loaded at each of those steps. In cases when the uplift of extra fuel should be avoided or minimized, there are usually two steps of the loading, load, uh, fuel loading process, the initial and final ones. The initial step is about loading a certain percentage of the planned required fuel, usually about 80 to 90 percent, and it happens early before departure. The final stage should happen as close to departure as possible so, so that the most accurate amount of necessary fuel is added on top of what was loaded at the initial stage. Additionally, there can also be another intermediate step that is usually called the standby fuel loading, which is used primarily on tanker flights. The major contribution of modern weight and balance systems is that they can forecast the zero fuel weight pretty accurately and in a timely manner which allows airlines to minimize the percentage of fuel loaded at the final stage based on historical zero fuel weight forecasting errors. Another thing is that modern weight and balance systems can send fuel slips or fuel orders directly to fuel suppliers immediately after they're issued. It is generally known that the aircraft center of gravity has an impact on the actual fuel consumption during the flight. Basically, the, full, the further forward the aircraft CG is, the larger pitch-up moment needs to be created by the tail horizontal stabilizer, which basically reduces the total lift force and increases the drag. Therefore, the aft aircraft CG is usually better for the fuel consumption. Although it's a widely known fact it is usually hard to calculate the exact fuel saving achieved by targeting of the optimal CG as the actual aircraft CG is not accounted for when the amount of required fuel is calculated by the flight planning system. However, at least some airplane manufacturers can provide airlines with data and tools required to calculate the train drag difference and respective fuel savings. On average, the trim drag difference between the most forward and most aft centers of gravity is about 4%. With this knowledge, airlines often define their ideal, ideal trim areas close to the aft CG limits. However, some aircraft types are susceptible to ground stability issues, and for those aircraft types, the aft CG usually increases a risk of a tail tipping incident. From a ground stability perspective, the forward CG is a safe option. Therefore, the ground stability and CG fuel saving are two conflicting factors. On one hand, airlines want to save fuel, and those total fuel savings can be very significant if the optimal CG is achieved in most flights. On the other hand, one of the things that airlines want to experience least is a tail tipping incident 
which can cost an airline a lot of money. Therefore, airlines should take a smart approach here and define their ideal trim areas in such a way that a reasonable balance between the ground stability and CG fuel saving is achieved. Whichever ideal trim areas are defined by airlines, modern weight and balance systems can target them automatically when the load is distributed by the system. Also, modern weight and balance systems are capable of alerting load planning agents about exceeding of a tail tipping limit by producing either a warning or an error. Airlines are often restricted in their ability to load everything that is planned or booked for a flight. Those restrictions are usually the total aircraft weight and CG, the available volume, weight and other limitations related to cargo holds, such as combined or cumulative load limits, etc. In addition, the amount of time required to unload the aircraft upon its arrival from the previous flight and to load the planned load before departure also significantly matters along with available resources such as the loading equipment and personnel. Situations when the planned load needs to be partially offloaded and when the standby load items need to be loaded just minutes before departure are quite common. Such situations often cause either flight delays or unnecessary or incorrect offloading of load or both. Therefore, it is very important that a modern weight and balance system can forecast the aircraft weight as accurately as possible and alert load planning agents about significant zero fuel weight changes and load, uh, low underload margins to avoid last minute overweight surprises. Also, it is important for a modern weight and balance system to estimate the actual volume of the bulk load to avoid situations when there is no more available volume to accommodate the planned load in selected aircraft locations, such as cargo sections or compartments. Advising a load planning agent about what should be left on the ground in case of an overweight or out of trim situation based on payload priorities is also something that a modern weight and balance system should be capable of. And the last but not least, a modern weight and balance system should be capable of advising a load planning agent about the ability to load standby load items in a timely manner. Airport and navigation fees constitute a very significant part of airline costs. Both airport and navigation fees are commonly based on the aircraft maximum takeoff weight, not the actual takeoff weight. Therefore, airlines usually need to pay for the weight that they do not use. Depending on the airline's fleet, network, schedule and other factors, airlines can optimize their aircraft maximum weights on a long or short-term basis. Usually it requires reissuance of the airplane flight manual by the airplane manufacturer and the noise certificate by the Civil Aviation Authority. Airlines need to be very careful with selecting desired maximum aircraft weights and planning their operations for months or even years to come as this maximum weight change costs time and money and the risks of payload restrictions increase when airplanes with reduced maximum weights are operated. Regardless of whether an airline uses reduced or original maximum weight values across its fleet, an airline should assign individual aircraft to, to flights very carefully, considering the estimated zero fuel weight and the maximum takeoff weight, both to avoid payload restrictions and to optimize its airport and navigation fees, which differ from flight to flight. Although the main effort here is on the airline side, modern weight and balance systems can support airlines in this by forecasting and calculating the aircraft weight accurately and by alerting load planning and operational control personnel as early as possible about potential overweight situations. The level of automation provided by modern weight and balance systems is so high that it allows a single load planning agent to handle tens of flights at the same time and hundreds of flights per shift. 
Therefore, in the modern world, the centralized load planning, often referred to as CLC, becomes more and more popular which means that a load planning office handles many flights of one or multiple airlines departing from different airports across the region or even the globe. Airlines can either have their own CLC offices or outsource their job to dedicated CLC providers. Whichever CLC option an airline chooses, the load planning job no longer needs to be performed by a local load planning agent working at an airport from which an aircraft departs. Moreover, with modern weight and balance systems, it's no longer needed to deliver paper documents to and from an aircraft. Both improvements allow airlines to reduce their ground handling costs that can be expressed in currency units per load sheet or flight as negotiated between an airline and local ground handling companies. The increase of personnel productivity is another major win for an airline. If an airline employs its own CLC office, this productivity increase allows an airline to optimize the number of personnel directly. If an airline uses services of a dedicated CLC provider, the increased productivity should have an impact on a negotiated cost of flights handled by that provider. Basically, the mentioned productivity increase is achieved by relieving load planning agents of most of the manual workload and unnecessary regular communications. With modern weight and balance solutions, load planning agents need to intervene manually in the automatized flight processing or to communicate with other parties only when non-standard situations occur or when anything goes not according to a schedule. In addition to that, other parties like pilots, ramp, cargo, fuel and other agents are also relieved of the necessity to communicate with load planning agents or even with each other as all necessary information is transmitted and made available via numerous system interfaces. Regardless of who provides CLC services for an airline, either an airline itself or a CLC provider, Training costs have either a direct or indirect impact on the airline's cost efficiency. The fact that the load planning is performed in a centralized way reduces the number of stuff that need to be trained significantly. With a centralized load planning model, there is also no or almost no need for personnel of an airline or ground handling companies to travel to other locations to deliver or attend training courses. In addition, many airlines nowadays deliver training courses online, which reduces training costs even more. Modern weight and balance systems are graphical and intuitive, they require less human involvement, and they perform most of weight and balance checks and validations automatically, which means that such systems are easier to learn by end users. Therefore, the training duration for modern weight and balance systems is generally lower than the one for legacy systems. The fact that modern weight and balance systems require much less communication between different parties and that remaining communications are digital, communication costs can be reduced significantly. For example, there is usually no need for load planning agents to call ramp agents or flight crew and vice versa, as they can interact in the system using a mobile ramp application or an EFB interface. This is particularly important for international calls. Also, the expensive ACOS traffic can be reduced by using the EFB interface. Usually, this traffic is used by communications between pilots and load planning agents, and also by delivery and acknowledgement uh, of load sheets and notifications to captain, also known as no talk. The ground type B traffic is less expensive than the ACOS one, but its total volume is much higher. In the old world, airlines used to send many telex messages to many recipient addresses, but it's no longer necessary in the modern world, as information can be distributed, forwarded, or shared using alternative modern channels. Although the aviation industry is not ready yet, for the 100% accurate forecasting and calculating of the aircraft weight and CG before every flight, 
and for fully automated load control processes without any human involvement, it is moving steadily in these directions. In addition, the centralized load planning concept will continue to gain popularity in the aviation industry and a rate of weight imbalance related accidents and incidents will continue to fall along with a number of flight delays caused by issues in the weight imbalance and load control processes. In the meantime, airlines and also other industry players like ground handling companies should take the maximum advantage of existing and emerging capabilities provided by modern weight and balance solutions to increase their operational and cost efficiency in all possible ways, which is needed during this difficult time as never before. Thank you for attention. All right, so I guess that's, uh, that's all for, for this presentation. Uh, Volodymyr, I hope you are with us, as I can see some questions uh, to you in the chat box. Uh, can you please confirm you're, you're there? Uh, yes, 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 I am. Yeah. All right, so uh, once again, guys, I'm really sorry for the technical difficulties. It happens sometimes, we, we have to do with that. I hope, um, I hope you're, uh, you didn't stay mad at us. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to the questions. Uh, first one, what uh, prevents airlines from taking full advantage of modern weight and balance solutions? Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I thought that question coming uh, during my video presentation. So it's a very good question, actually. Uh, you know, there are quite a few different reasons why airlines cannot take full advantage of their modern weight and balance systems, even though some of them are actually using those modern uh, systems like smart load, uh, for example. Uh, so the first one is that airlines are not always able to recognize benefits, costs, opportunities. So during this presentation, I listed quite a few different different ways to optimize airlines costs but not everyone uh, really realizes it and uh, even if the airline uh, recognizes uh, the, uh, the those benefits costs opportunities uh, it not necessarily can measure them accurately right so for example things like flight delays uh, payload offloads or the CG fuel saving is, is really hard to calculate. And believe me, not many airlines can do that. Uh, the training costs, for example, and other costs as well. So as you, as you probably know, uh, what, uh, what gets measured gets managed, right? And that's one of the major problems. Then uh, there are things that are not easy to implement on the airline side. So for example, uh, in, in the presentation, I mentioned that uh, I mentioned several uh, things that could improve the accuracy of the weight and balance calculations. For example, pantry, portable water, passenger weights. So, for example, with regard to the passenger weights, uh, the gender of a passenger is not always known. So, it is usually known uh, where the, uh, pass the passport information is required from the passenger. But if it's not required, for example, for most domestic flights across the world, it is not known. And, and there are other technical restrictions here, so which just simply does not allow an airline to take advantage of it. Or, for example, as I know, a few airlines in the world collect statistical data for passenger ways, right? But it's, please believe me, it is not, it's not an easy task to do. Uh, and also other things, for example, for pantry, it's, re it, you know, the, the concepts of uh, food and beverages on, on aircraft, they constantly evolve. The constant change with low cost modules, uh, low cost uh, airlines, you know, it's constantly evolving. And it's hard to calculate this and keep it updated. So, and there are a lot of other things I just don't want to waste uh, time on listing all of them, right? So for example, portable water, it's, it's really hard to measure it. So for example, if the airline says that we uh, need to load only 50% of water, so it, not all airplanes are technically uh, ready for this. Uh, the other reason is the airline IT infrastructure. So there are, believe me, not necessarily all large airlines have a great IT infrastructure. And many small airlines surprisingly have a great IT infrastructure. So airlines differ very, very much. So some of them simply don't have uh, data warehouses. They cannot take advantage of the business intelligence 
to, to, to support their cost efficiency program, uh, or the integration capabilities are poor. Or for example, airlines, um, the EFB, the electronic flight bank, which I mentioned during the presentation, uh, not all airlines have it, or they don't have devices, or these devices are not universal, so the, for example, or there is no connectivity, which is a very trendy thing. Um, yeah, and also another issue is that, uh, for example, if an airline uses a modern weight and balance system, it can use other legacy systems. For example, the flight planning or cargo system can be the legacy system, which is very time and uh, time consuming and requires a lot of investments uh, to, to build uh, certain interfaces. And for example, even with the ramp mobile solutions that are available uh, in smart load, for example, and, and in some other systems as well. So, you know, although this, these applications exist, not all airlines can, can take advantage of them because of the lack of devices or lack of internet connection at some remote airports. So, yeah, I think, I think basically that those are the main reasons. I hope it answers your question. Yes, thank you. Uh, so another question, uh, what is the next step for weight and balance solutions such as smart load taking into consideration ongoing digital transformation in the aviation industry? Uh, okay, um, well, as I mentioned in the last slide of my presentation, right, so about where the industry is currently going. So, uh, well, first of all, most of the mentioned features that I mentioned, well, I think that all of them we have in smart load, right? But, you know, there is always room for improvement. So there is no, I mean, there is no perfect state. So we're constantly improving them, right? So for example, one of the topics is uh, statistical data, right? So uh, because it's very, it's a very fashionable thing in the industry, right? So, oh, we're using statistical data, historical data, and so on. But the main question is how it is used, right? And, and you know, there can be very innovative ideas that could be implemented. But from my experience, uh, from my previous uh, career, from my previous airline career, I just, I just want to say that mm, airlines might just not be ready for uh, new ideas that come, you know? So, because basically even the use of statistical data is still something more or less new in the industry. Uh, but the main goal, the main goal I think of any, uh, weight and balance system provider is to help airlines, but not only airlines, by the way, because uh, that such systems are used by ground handling companies as well and by CLC providers. So the goal is to help those companies improve their cost efficiency because right now we are in the mid in the middle of the deep crisis, right? So and this is one of the most important things. So yeah, there is always room for improvement, but as I mentioned again just to re reiterate myself. So um, we need to aim for further minimization of human involvement in the process. So ideally the whole process should be automated, right? Uh, especially with regard to load planning agents sitting in the office. Their work is already almost, uh, al almost fully automated, right? Uh, with ramp agents, it's much, uh, it's much more complicated because they're uh, always there need to there need to be someone who will load the airplane right and and of course we'll, no no one will probably replace pilots in the near future so yeah i think that, that that's that's yeah that's our that's the main goals for now All right.